Back again, y'all. Shop Talk with Cassandra Shop Renee. Talk with Cassandra Renee, the radio show where we talk about it all. Hey, welcome, welcome to, to Shop Talk, Talk with Cassandra, Cassandra Renee. Renee. With me are my co hosts, Kevin Eaton and Angelo Superstar Barbara Richardson. Richardson. Good morning. Hey. Good morning, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You, guys you guys ready? Yay, yay. Yay, yay. On the phone, we have Miss B. Good morning. Good morning, Miss B. Hey. Hi, everyone. We, we doing good. Good. Welcome, Welcome to the, the show. show. Thanks. Yeah, we, we still, still buzzing, buzzing from that last uh, show, show we had last week. Last week, last week yeah. was on I fire. <laughs> yes, it was. You know, it's so <laughs> funny because people are still talking to me about it. Okay. And once I got, I got home last Monday, Monday, someone wanted to debate, debate with me about it. I'm like, hey, I'm not living that life. We were right. talking about me. Why are we, we having this verbal exchange? Right. And, and, and for those of you who missed last week, we actually, actually talked about open marriages. Mm-hmm. And Renee, who was actually in an open marriage, called into the show mm-hmm. yesterday. I mean, I'm, last Monday. Mm-hmm. She was an excellent guest. She, she was. was. She really was. Very, very organized, very mm-hmm. detailed, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of our callers, they gave their opinions and, you know, you know, my, my feeling on it is, is, is live and let live. Who am I to judge anyone's situation? Um, I, I happen to know Renee and her husband, and they are a very happy couple. You know, they have a beautiful home. They, they're they very much in love with each other. So who am I to judge their situation? Mm-hmm. Right. My thing is I go to church, but I ain't no angel. Yes. yes. Nobody is. None of us are. You know, we yeah. all have skeletons in our closet yeah. somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Might not want nobody to know about it, but hey. Exactly. But you know what they say, whatever's done in the dark comes to light. Always. If it doesn't come out in the wash, it comes out in the dryer. I can go on and on and on and on. Think about What do you think, Angelo? I know you struggled with the subject last week. Well, yeah, I'm really not the belonging to type of person. So I, I don't like marriage, but I mean, if God moves my feet in that direction, then I mean, I guess I'll do it. But uh oh, y'all hear that? Yeah. You'll do it. Angela is open for the, for the situation. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'll do it. Yeah. If, if, I guess it'll work if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, today though, we're going to talk about fatal attractions. Da-da. Da-da. I guess most of us remember a fatal attraction movie with Alex Forrest and the Michael Douglas character, Mr. Dan Gallagher. Where she, she was, was just, just crazy. Oh, yeah. She yeah. was banana. Oh, yeah. 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 She pulled the rap. Oh, yeah. yeah. she pulled the rap. That's what we remember. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she kidnapped the little girl. She kidnapped the little girl. And my favorite line of the movie. I won't be ignored, Dan. Okay. I love it. <laughs> like she had rights, right? She, she, thought she did. did. I, mean, I mean, she played, played that role yeah, to the law. Oh, she she did. Did. oh my gosh. And, 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 and you know, I think most of us, well, some of us, you know, we put the question out there and not, not many people responded. So I guess people are maybe, maybe a little bit afraid, afraid to talk about, about their fatal attractions, you know, or, you know, maybe they were victims or maybe they the ones who... Victimized. <laughs> Maybe they were the stalkers. I don't know. <laughs> On the air, we have Think Hard. Hi, Think Hard. Hello, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm great. Welcome, Welcome to the show. show. Our topic today is stalkers, fatal attractions. <laughs> Would you like to add something to it? You know, it's, it's interesting. There are different levels of stalkers. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes some people kind of bring it on themselves because those potential stalkers show their true colors way, way, way before you actually get deep into a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what type of, what do they show? I mean, like what type of behavior? If, if, you know, you've gone out with somebody for a week and they're burning up your phone mm-hmm. and they want to know where you are all the time. Mm. And they seem to catch mm. attitude every time you mm. won't tell them mm-hmm. where you are. And, mm. you know, they got to know everybody you know. And, oh. you know, they want to sit real close. And they got to be touching you all the time. Mm. And they got to, you know. Pulling your skirt down. That's stalking. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting to have them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with you, Dan Carter. I've heard that before, too. But a lot of times you can not- tell way in the beginning. If oh, somebody's right. a stalker, if they mm-hmm. text you all the time, same thing they're saying. Really? Mm-hmm. 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 So if they overstimulate you, yeah. they're always all up on you, then they could potentially mm-hmm. be a stalker. And yeah. if you can't breathe, mm-hmm. really? And a lot of times we think if somebody really loves me, then, you know. Yeah. 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 Then, 
you know, somebody who really loves you gives you your space because they know that that love can be overbearing. Yeah, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. A stalker is not giving you that space because they're so afraid you're going to go be with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That they're not trying to give you breathing room. So, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. You know, you know someone, someone was telling me about, about a, a stalking, stalking story um, of, of their, their own, you know, know where, where the, the person actually sat outside, outside their home. The person was in the car and sat not exactly in front of the house, but, but a little ways down. And would just sit there and just watch the comings and goings mm -hmm. out of the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous stalking behavior. You need to nip that in the bud yes. right way, way, way. As soon as you find out, you need to nip that in the bud. You know, and the scariest thing about it is, I was talking to Kevin about it as we were waiting to come on, is... He was a police officer. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, he felt like um, he wasn't doing anything harmful. Yeah, because he wasn't in front of the house. He wasn't in front of the house. Mm -hmm. See, one thing about it, and I, I guess I'm going to put myself, put myself out here like this, because I, I worked for the police department. That's my first real job. And so I worked very closely with police officers, cadets, and that sort of thing. And in order to be a good police officer, you have to have that criminal mind. I'm you sorry. Right. I just yeah. said it. You're right. <laughs> you know, think like they think. You have to think like they think. And a lot of times they're wise enough to kind of take it all the way to the edge without going over. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it seems to me that's what this person did. They took it to the edge, you know, where the person couldn't really complain because they weren't sitting outside the house. They weren't really following. They were just sitting there. Mm -hmm. They actually could complain, but um, mm -hmm. they, they just because they weren't sitting directly outside of their house, they could complain. And say what? And, and basically <laughs> say that I have somebody that's watching my house. And the problem is, especially nowadays, the law, stalking laws are so much better now than they were. Than they were. Mm -hmm. um, and especially with all the increases in domestic violence cases where people were actually being killed. Mm -hmm. um, true. The courts are taking it way more seriously than they used to. It, it, you know, it's no longer, oh, that's between him and his woman. Or yes. It's none of that anymore. So they, they actually are taking it more seriously. And, you know, those are the, the more serious ends of the stalking cases. But one thing, you know, and this is just for me being the person that I am, it, it, stalkers don't like to be stalked. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the way around it. The type of person that, that wants to watch every place you go, show up at his job. All right. Uh -huh. Show up at his house and knock on his door okay. uh, 10 o'clock at night. Call yeah. his phone in the middle of the day. Yeah, exactly. What you want? What you want? Uh -huh. Crazy don't like crazy. No. Oh, crazy doesn't like crazy. Crazy no. don't like crazy. Okay. You can only be one crazy person in a relationship. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Once, 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 crazy, once crazy finds out that the other person is a little crazier, yes. oh, they're they going to leave crazy alone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I believe that. to mess with. You, you know, know these are some, some good tips. tips. I wish I was talking to Hank Hall 20, 20, 20 years ago. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's some good information. Okay. Yeah. You act crazier <laughs> than the crazy person. Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, think about it. You know, think about it. Think about it. Remember when you used to get to those fights when you were younger? When you were a little mm -hmm. kid? Okay. And, and that one person sitting up there, oh, I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do it. And you mm -hmm. say, well, go ahead then. Oh, Hit me with it. Here. Take it. Hit me with it. How fast did that fight end? That's true. Very quick. You're right. Everyone's scattered. Yeah, it didn't even start out. You're right. They don't want to be real crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, our listeners in North want to get in, you know, with the conversation, we're at 410-481-1010. Go think hard. Yeah. You're on. I'm just saying, you know, but that's that's just the just of it. Crazy don't like crazy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, to the more serious end of it, you know, if somebody is saying to you, you know what, if you leave me, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, take it seriously. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't play those kinds of games. Oh, they would never do that. Yes, they would. Yeah, yes, you they would. believe what they say. You know what? Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that love you more than you love that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. So get out, get away, go do what you got to do to make yourself safe. And uh -huh. don't go back. Because if he threatened to kill you once... Right. Kill you He's planning on killing you. Yes. Don't do it. Because once you leave, regardless of whether you go back, he's going to kill you. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. He's already said it. He's yeah. already, already mentioned it. Yeah. He's already told you he's going to do it. Yeah. But, but you know, know what gets me, me, gets me with people like that, though? They, they always try to alienate you from your, your support. Oh, that's going to happen. You know, they move you away from family and friends and have you isolated so that they can control your mind. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and and it, it happens way too much with young people. Yes. And I oh, yeah. a lot of young people where 
where, you know, those types of things go on. And, you know, I just like, you know, we, we empower each other by talking about it. We have to empower each other by giving resources, avail- making sure resources are available for those people who do decide, you know what? <laughs> Um, yeah. really get ready to follow through. I need to get out of here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. You know, Miss B, you had a story that you shared yeah. with me right along, yeah. those, along those back front. And, and exactly. I was listening to a show, and there was a young lady who was married. She was in a domestic violence um, situation, and she had children by this man. He was her college sweetheart. She loved him. She adored him. He loved her, opposed, supposedly. Well, he was abusive, and her she contacted her girlfriends, and they told her, said, now, listen, I'm just going to say her name. Well, Sheila, Sheila, if we come and get you, you're going to have to stay away from him because he's already threatened to kill you. Mm. Well, they took her to another state. He found out where she was. He, they talked for several months. Guess what? She told him exactly where she was. They met. He killed her. Mm-hmm. 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 So now these children, their children, are without a mother mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. without a father. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Wow. And her, her her best friend that took her to the safe haven, she, you know, kind of has like a guilty feeling, you know, because she's saying, what else could I have done? Yes. And there was nothing she could have done mm-hmm. because she. this was un- un- sad to say, but it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. She loved the man more than she loved herself. herself. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, more than she it. loved her children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, that's what happens when a person takes control over your mind. I still and say he, that. Yeah, she had control. Yeah. Yes. Because, see, the thing is, she loved him, and she wanted to believe the best. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what she saw. Which we have a, have a she, tendency she, of doing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But you know what? When people tell you something, you better believe it. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Serious. You better believe it because when someone makes a threat that they're going to kill you, they ain't just talking. Right. Yeah. That's serious. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's some fact behind that. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. You yes. know, and oftentimes these people, they suffer from borderline personality disorder. Yeah, it's no yeah. borderline personality disorder. They want what they want. They're selfish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're selfish. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I still think they have to be have some sickness behind no, all they that. Don't, because you know, some mental illness. It's some mental illness. It's some mental yeah. illness. It can't be just selfishness. They're so productive in society in every other way, mm. but something in their life said, "This is how you possess people," mm-hmm. and I want to possess somebody. Uh-huh. And you, and you know what? They've seen this happen. Mm-hmm. It's not something just just starting. This is history. More than likely, their parents, it was the relationship of their parents, and, mm-hmm. you know, they've seen it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They've they seen it. They you know, they're, they're mimicking what they've been taught. Yeah. Same, Same thing with abuse. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It but runs in families, families oh, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Learned behavior. Yeah. Learned behavior. I have what, a, you, what you grow up with. I have a story similar to yours, Miss B. I don't put it out there like my cousin do sometimes. She just go ahead and go with it. Okay, mm-hmm. It's happened mm-hmm. personally to me. Which happened when I was like, uh, I guess about 20 years old, and my baby's mama had two cousins that was living in in her house, in her mother's house. Okay, mm-hmm. so you got my baby mama and two cousins living in my baby mama's mother's house. Okay, Ooh, I think I got all that. Okay, okay. Got me? okay. So one of the cousins we gonna call her, we gonna call her cousin Sheila, right? Cousin Sheila. Sheila, right? Sheila had a boyfriend named Eddie. Eddie? And Eddie would always beat up on Sheila all the time. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you, Sheila. I'm going to kill you, Shelly. And sure enough, one day, Eddie came in their house into my baby's mama's mother's house with uh-huh. a gun. Mm-hmm. He shot Sheila, shot the cousin, and shot my baby's mama's. And shot my baby mama. Baby mama, yes. Okay, uh-huh. Yes. And, and, and Sheila did, been dead about 30 years now. Mm-hmm. Her cousin died. She even did, same time, 30 years. And my, my, my baby's mama is in a wheelchair. She's yes. in a wheelchair for like the last 30 years. So, oh, I, wow. I mean, you know, back then I didn't know what fatal attraction was and I didn't know what domestic violence was and stuff like that. But I do know that he, he fulfilled what he said he was going to do. Mm-hmm. He always mm-hmm. kept that. So all he kept saying, I'm going to kill you, shit. I'm going to kill you. And oh. sure enough, he came in and shot everybody in the house. Wow. wow. And, and the children. Mm-hmm. They, they weren't there. They all have children? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had, he had a baby by, by his girlfriend. 
Mm-hmm. And he had a, and a, a, a son that was already like, about, I don't know, five or six or something like that. Mm-hmm. So he's, I guess he's still in jail or whatever. And that's been like, he's been there, he got life. So now you got two kids that the father shot the mother. And the father's in jail. You know, the mother's dead. So they're growing up really without their actual mother and father behind mm-hmm. exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so with it being uh, hereditary and, and the type of family thing, so now you're going to wonder about their children. Yes. Yes, exactly right. You know, and what did they see? You, you know exactly. yeah, what did they experience mm-hmm. through their lives, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. Yeah, they are harboring because of it. So That's true. You know, hey, word from the wise. Somebody said they're going to kill you. Believe it. He, he better get out I'm of Dodge. You, I'm telling you. Okay. Believe it. You know what, believe it. If you want to live, and I grew up with it, around my aunt, my uncle, and whatever, but they, these type of men won't hit a woman in front of another man, not a strong man, because mm-hmm. he's too afraid of what that man's going to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. He's not going to do it. He's going to wait till there's a bunch of women around mm-hmm. or they're behind closed doors or there's a bunch of children around because mm-hmm. that's what makes him feel powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there are some women who stalk and some women who abuse men, too. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. You can't oh, yeah. say just men. Right. Sometimes women are guilty of that as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I got stories for that, too. You got stories for that, too. I got stories for everything. <laughs> Crazy don't just exist on the man's side, it exists on the woman's yeah. side. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crazy yeah. does not discriminate. Mm-hmm. 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 Crazy is crazy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Crazy. That's all. Hello, you're live on the air. Peace and blessings. Hello. Hello. Hi. Peace and goodwill that's paternal. Thank you. You're welcome. You all are discussing a very complicated case. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, a very complicated subject because it's you know, we forget that religion has set the stage for a lot of what people believe in relationships. Okay. Remember that we've been taught that a man is supposed to dominate the woman. So young people have a term, uh, you remember the one they call Disney? Yes. Okay. Well, when sometimes when people feel that they're disrespected, then they have to put the other person in their place. Okay. Mm-hmm. Remember that discussion that a woman has a certain place? Yes. Okay, well, a lot of people are still in that mindset. They have not been taught any differently. They have not come to understand any differently. And this kind of brings in Maya Angelou when she says, if we knew better, we do better. Do better. better. Mm-hmm. Okay. So sometimes you would be surprised that, I'm going to just give you the scenario. The man is standing out there after he's put money into a woman, he's put time, he's put himself into her, and she thinks that she can dangle him. Now, this could be uh, the woman treating the man this way or a man treating the woman this way, okay? Mm -hmm. And then after he's gone dry, she wants to get rid of him. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't get rid of him, uh, as young people would say, straight up. Mm-hmm. She pretends there's something wrong with him. Mm-hmm. So then he feels so disrespected, he feels so stripped of his manhood that he can't even think of anything except to get even. Mm-hmm. Wow. And for another yeah. person to give up their life, because both people are going to lose their lives. Like you say, that person is in jail. Right. right. Uh-huh. Okay, so both people lose their lives, one to bondage and the other one to actually leaving the physical plane, right? Mm-hmm. But you got to also understand, and there's a male there, so I know he will appreciate this, that some of those who look like me, meaning women, they really think that men who have emotions and can express emotions are something to use and abuse. Hmm. That's an interesting perspective. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Peace to you. Peace to you as well. Think hard. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> okay. You know, I, I'm, I'm just of a different world. Yes. I grew up around that abusive behavior, but I also grew up around very strong women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and very strong men. There were a few that would 
were not. Uh-huh. Um, but their mentality, to, their mentality was different. So what they preached was different. So mm-hmm. what they showed was different. And what they lived was different. They lived with the philosophy of, you know, they were God-fearing women and men. But their thing was, you know what? God did not put us here to be abused by other people. Right. That's right. right. There's no justification for, for that. And right. it just seemed like the last caller was kind of justifying it. <laughs> no, it, it, that's what it seemed like to me. But nothing is justified ever. No. You put your hands on me. Just keep moving. The only thing that is justified by that is me returning the favor. Mm. Okay, Angel- Angelo. Yeah. Angelo, what are your thoughts on this? Well, my, my thoughts, I've, I've grown up in um, a household where abuse was prevalent. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the one reasons why I would never wanted to be married. Yes. Like I was telling you last week, I've seen in my entire family, every male had a wife mm-hmm. and a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. There was always physicalities every week. Yes, mm. every week. Every week. Somebody's either, there's a fight here, this one did this. My mom and her husband. Um, I've seen my aunt be abused when I was very young. Oh, my God. From a boyfriend and a boyfriend who I look up to. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And I, I could have not been more than eight. Mm. And I remember having a conversation with him because I, I guess I became afraid of him. So he wanted to talk to me. Oh. And I told him. Well, you can't do that to her. You know what I mean? You know how children talk yeah. to women. Right. And I was afraid. And often, even to this day, I remember his name, but I don't remember who he is or what he looks like. But I remember oh. being very fond of him until he beat my aunt up very badly. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. So, very badly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that has had an effect on you, Angelo. It has. Mm-hmm. It has. And that's mm-hmm. why I don't. I, relationship for what? What do you mean? Yeah, why? I can't belong to you, you can't belong to me. Right. When mm-hmm. we leave this earth, we're not going together. That's right. I don't okay. think. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean. You don't plan on having that yeah. way either. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, now on to our sponsorship. Have you ever asked yourself, what can I do to live even healthier? Take the Healthy Body Challenge and live 90 for life. Call 410-274-5896. Again, that's 410-274-5896. The call that will change your life for the rest of your life. Also, Dr. Joel Wallach will be at the Hilton Pikesville Hotel tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Guests of Tanya Lassiter will get in free. Also a sponsor is Coif Your Exclusive Salon. We specialize in hair extension, hair replacement services in a private environment. Please give us a call at 410-663-2643 or visit us online at cesalon.net. Also, Afrolistics in Glen Burnie, Maryland. What is the telephone number? That would be 410-768. Zero three eight four. Mm-hmm. Also, we are kicking off our Mother's Day campaign where we're going to be offering free hair replacement mm-hmm. to a very lucky mother. Um, there are so many women out there, Miss B, correct, that are it suffering from hair loss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, Coif Your Exclusive wants to treat a very special mother. So, um, we're going to actually put some information on the website and also on our face, Facebook fan page. Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee about that. So, if that's something that you are interested in and you know a very special mother who can benefit from this, because again, so, women, so many women suffer, and I'm sure even the men who are listening, you know of a woman who is suffering Mm -hmm. and who cannot afford a hair replacement unit unit well coiffure exclusive wants to treat a very special mom so you can contact us at info at talkwithcassandra.com or our facebook page again which is uh shop talk with cassandra renee um, also, just to remind you our website is talkwithcassandra.com please follow us on twitter Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Definitely. We, yeah, because we videotape every we single have what you call show. It. Archive. <laughs> we do have an archive, so that way you can see what's going on in the background. Indeed. So please, please, please subscribe to us, okay? Because you'd be surprised at what you don't see when you listen on the radio. Oh, yeah. Uh, you see a lot, like what yeah. we're doing right now. <laughs> if you want to get involved in our From the Heart campaign, which is AIDS, AIDS, AIDS and HIV awareness, sarcoidosis, and lupus, please give us a call or email us. And our telephone number is 443-579-7690. C-O-I-F-F-U-R-E. Mm-hmm. Coiffure. Coiffure Exclusive Salon. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, so, Miss B, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, 
as far as the the message that we were talking about today, you know, people, we need to start listening to uh-huh. what people are saying to us. Yes. And yes. take it at face value. Yes. Save yourself, save your children. Yes, please yes. do, because it, it definitely affects them for the rest of their mm-hmm. lives. Oh, yes. Think hard. Do you have any closing remarks? Yeah. Especially since this issue, we're talking about older women. I yes. feel for a lot of young people. Hey, that means you too. That's, That's right. If yeah. he hits you once, He's going to hit you. He, he will hit you again. Thank oh, yeah. you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in again. And uh, we look forward to visiting with you again next week. So until next week, bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye, y'all. The radio show where we talk about it all. The Beatles car was like a little bit backwards or something. It was small. Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee. The radio show where we talk about it all. Beauty, sports, current events, health, travel, music, and so much more. You can reach us at... Yeah. Are the ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the words. The ones that go above and beyond for you. So there you go, y'all. Another one in the can. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. I'm Ebony McMorris, Massachusetts.